What's going on? Bitwise Guy here. Today is the 27th of December 2015 and today we're going to be going over uh, booleans um, and some basic boolean logic in Rust. So, if you haven't already, go ahead and scaffold your project and make a main.rs file. Um, in this next couple of videos, um, I would say it's going to be about five or six videos, we're going to be going over um, <clears throat> all the primitive types in Rust and how you can use them. If you haven't already watched my other videos, I would suggest you go back and watch those videos as they will uh, clearly and concisely explain how to set up a project in Rust um, and how to get to the point which you're looking at now. <clears throat> Okie dokie. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and we'll make our uh, main function. So we'll say fn main, just like that. Alright, so let's understand what a boolean is. <clears throat> Essentially, a boolean is like a light switch. A boolean has two values. It has true and it has false. Now, a boolean simply represents one or zero. Is it on or is it off? Now, all, we, all we're really trying to do here is we're trying to see is something true or is something false. Um, and this is kind of, this, this becomes useful later when we want to find out whether, say for example, uh, a function returns true or a function returns false. Uh, because you may want to know whether something completed successfully, um, but you may not want to do um, other kinds of error handling, which we'll go into later. I don't really have a specific reason why you might want to do Boolean logic now, but trust me, it's really important to programming. Now, there are two types of ways that you can declare a Boolean variable in Rust. There is an implicit declaration, um, and there is an explicit declaration, and I'll show you both of those. And then we'll be using a Boolean within a function. So, the first thing that we'll do is we'll say let my variable, and I know that this is not snake case, but um, I really don't like snake case, but I recommend that if you want to stick to um, the Rust standard kind of way of doing things, um, go ahead and just use snake case all you like. Um, I, I personally don't like snake case. I think it's messy, um, and, I, and I find it hard to read when variable names get very long. Righto, so... That's literally it. We've simply created a Boolean variable. So what we'll do is we'll just test this to make sure that this works is we'll write this out and we'll say, we'll CD up one direction, we'll say cargo build and we'll see if we get any errors and um, of course we get a, a snake case error. Um, however, we don't get any errors with our code. Now what we can do here is let's add some basic Boolean logic. So we'll say sudo nano source main.rs and we'll open up our file again. Now we'll say if my variable equals true print ln we'll say print ln like that and then we'll say true. Now let's go ahead and let's build this. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll say cargo run and we'll say cargo run and sure enough it returns true. Now, let's go back and let's edit our file. And what we'll do is we'll say else. So just to prove that this works, we'll say else print ln macro string replace false and what we'll do is we'll say cargo run and it will build and of course it returns true so just one more time we'll clear the console and just to prove that this works because you know I really want to prove to you guys hey that this is really boolean logic uh, we'll go ahead and we'll edit this file and we'll set my variable equal to false and we'll write that out, control O, control X, and we'll say cargo run, and sure enough, we get false in the console, where if you can't see that, that's right there. Now, there's one more way that you can um, declare a variable as a boolean. 
Well, let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> so, the way in which you can explicitly declare that this is a boolean, and in fact this is true with all types in Rust, we'll be going over this much more when we go over more of the primitive types in Rust. I personally prefer, uh, prefer in very large programs um, to explicitly define the type uh, I, yeah, I prefer to do it explicitly. Uh, I'm sorry, I just brain farted. But anyway. So there you go. So that's essentially the same as letting the compiler work it out. And we can save this, and we can exit, and we'll say cargo run, and sure enough, it still works. Now, let's just do one more thing. So I want to get a little bit into return types here, as return types of booleans are kind of easy to understand. So we'll say... <clears throat> sudo nano main.rs and we will clear all of this out of the way here um, so just bear with me while I clear all of this <clears throat> alright so we'll make a new function down here and we'll say fn is number greater than okay and we'll, make, we'll take our two variables here so we'll take one that is x and that'll be an int 32 Oops, and we'll say the other one is y, and that'll also be a um, int32. And the return type will be bool. And if this isn't making any sense to you, um, as Bucky Roberts always says, I promise it'll make sense in the next video. Um, but eventually we'll understand how all these return types work. Um, but just to quickly clarify for you guys, uh, this little arrow up here is essentially the return type of the function. Um, and if you don't understand what the return type is of a function, uh, we'll get to that uh, in the next couple of videos, I promise. So in here, we'll simply say, if x is greater than y and we'll say true else we'll say false now you'll notice how I didn't actually put a semicolon on the end of these um, and that is because a statement in Rust that returns does not require, and in fact cannot have a semicolon at the end of it. And what we'll do is we'll say let result equal to is number greater than, and we'll say um, 30 and 29, and then we'll say um, print ln macro Oops, and we'll say result, and we'll go ahead and we'll save that, and we will cargo run that, and sure enough, 30 is greater than 29, and if we want to prove that that works, uh, we can just simply change those around, so we can say sudo nano main.rs, and we'll say, um, we'll change this from, uh, we'll change this to 31 instead, and I'm really sorry, but um, my numlock keeps jumping the keys around, we'll say 32. I'll write that, we'll exit it, and we'll say cargo run, and sure enough, we get false. So, as you can see, we got true here, and we got false here. Okay, well, that's it for the Boolean tutorial for primitive types. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, stay tuned for the next video. I'm doing these all in sequence, so I'll be up uh, uploading these one after the other. Uh, so stay tuned, and um, they should all be up within the next couple of days. Peace.